Hi, Joey. This is my son's Nintendo Switch. A mobile phone shop attempted to repair it. It used to work fine, but never displayed a picture on the docking station. The phone shop attempted to replace the USB-C port and the P13 USB chip. Since then, the switch no longer turns on. I'm very disappointed. My son is very upset from this. We are struggling at the moment to replace it as he no longer can use his switch at all, where before at least it worked with just having the screen and no docking station. I'm hoping that you can do your best to fix it. As always, we love watching your content and videos. He also says, please keep the device if you can't repair it, as it may be useful possibly for parts of your future videos. And it's come in a nice box, so I can simply, hopefully, once I repair it, wrap it back up in the box and get it sent back. I'm praying that I can do this. Very well wrapped, FYI. I really like how well they've wrapped this device. Yeah, I get nervous with the ones that have been in a shop because you just never know what damage they've done. This is bent. Severely. This is really bent. Oh, I'm very surprised this still works. Well, it doesn't, but I'm shocked that it did work after it came back from the repair shop. That's awful how bent that is. Do you know what? On camera as well, it's not even coming across how bent that is, I don't think. There's no game, just to confirm. And do we have... There's no, there's no SD card either. I'm just going to see if it turns on. I mean, I should not be able to do that with a switch, by the way. It doesn't turn on. Um, how does the port look? from what the repair shop did. To be fair, there's not much flux down. I mean, I can see flux at the back of the port, but nothing horrendous. To me, on the face of it, that looks like a good installation. On the face of it. Uh, mark my words, this is maybe something I'm gonna come back to later and really regret saying. I am okay to put a charging cable into, into that. Where is the PLD meter? All right, let's go ahead and plug her in. What do we get? Do we get anything? I might need to turn it around, so bear with. Here we go. Don't tell me their charge is bust. No, it's not. We get 137. 137 shows for me a really flat battery. But can you see what this the amps are doing? Look at that. Can you see that? I've never seen that in my life with the Switch. That looks like, it, it. for me, it's trying to turn on, but something's shorted and it's just not getting there. It's just not getting to that maybe like final, final stage of the boot. That's not charging the battery. Very interesting. This is about to be very interesting. Now, if it's a blue screen of death, I've seen before that it can just maybe stay at 100 milliamps, but I've never seen it attempt to turn on. So maybe we don't have a blue screen here, even though it's silly, like really, really, really bent. This should have a blue screen death. I'm very surprised that the solder balls underneath the APU have survived this, to be honest. Let's get it taken apart. If I, if I really struggle to fix this, we have to take into consideration that it could well be some sort of bend in the board that is causing this, because I don't know if you can see it any better now on the blue. It is so bent. I know I've said that so many times. He said he already got a refund from the shop, I think. They put the wrong screw back here. Have we found our culprit for the issue? This is the screw that was in the SD card reader. Let me show you the screw that's meant to go in the SD card reader. This one is so much smaller than this one in both width and length. And I'm gonna bear that in mind for when I take it apart. So that's that's why like visual inspection and knowing where to look is crucial in this moment in time whilst I'm taking the Nintendo Switch apart because that now I've kind of flagged that I'm like, okay, so when I have a look at this, if I can't work out, Let's take a look there and see if that is potentially causing an issue. Do you know what? I've kind of done quite a lot of videos now, haven't I? On repair shop scams. Like there's a lot of, oh, I don't want to use the term scams. Legit, they've tried and they failed or whatever. But again, at least they got their money back for this repair. However, why take on the fix in the first place if, you, if you're not confident with it? Unless that's a conversation that you have with the customer. So in my head, if I was to own a repair shop, me personally, if I didn't want to take on a repair, I'd straight up tell the customer. I'd say, look, I'm not wanting to take on this repair. If you really want me to take on this repair, I just want to let you know I've not worked on that many before and anything can happen. I could screw this up. So before I get into this, I want you to know that information. And if they want to go ahead at that point, as long as you've got everything documented, lovely jubbly. Oh man, this screw's not coming out. First inspections of this board. I'm actually going to go over it with the microscope just to make sure somebody's been inside it. So I need to have a look and just make sure there's nothing ridiculously obvious that could be causing this to not work. Okay, here's our chore. Oh no, is that a bridge? That port is just not soldered on correctly. That's loose. That's loose. That's loose. That's loose. Well, that port needs to be redone regardless of our situation because I just don't think it's necessarily soldered very well. I'm excited to see how P13 USB looks. M92 T36 looks okay. I'm just gonna measure for shorts quickly whilst I'm here. M92 seems to be okay, hey? CPU cap. 500 ohms. P13 is shorted. Oh no. Wait, P13 USB is shorted? 
This is the P13 USB cap. So it could just be a bad P13 that they replaced. Did they potentially like take one from a donor and put it on this switch, but the one that they put on was faulty? I've not had a shorted P13 USB in, in I'd comfortably actually say years. Oh, I found the issue. There's about four things wrong here. And every time I look a bit harder, it gets worse. Bridge here. This resistor is bridging with this resistor. This cap is bridging with this cap. What am I looking at? How did this work? Lord, the uh, glove. They definitely didn't have a microscope. I'm gonna fix this up with hopefully a couple of uh, really swift movements. I don't know how bad this, this uh, P13 is soldered on, so bear with me. Right, let's put this filter back on where it should be. That is bubbling straight away. Sorry, I said filter. I, I, I think I meant to say resistor. So that's that. Um, and then pretty simply, I'm going to lower my airspeed right now to about 20%. I know it doesn't seem a lot. And then I'm just going to plop some flux here and here, which is a lot more than what I usually would. And I'm just going to give it a reflow. That is a bit too much. So let me soak some up. Is that still bridge down there? I can't see. I'm going to give this a squeeze down. We're going to get a lot of solder squeeze out here. Ready? Yeah, this is uh, this is not good. I don't know what. They've used low metal or something. This solder is... Oh, what am I... What am I looking at? What? Yeah. See how quickly that's liquidizing when I um, put my hot air gun on it? That's low melt. I'm pretty sure. We're coming in with some wick to sort this situation out. I never had this before, by the way. Let's come in with some flux here. It's better. Where's my TB? What's TB, Joey? Toothbrush. My friends. Now, annoyingly, when I solder these, oh, chip actually looks okay. When I solder these, I just leave the unleaded. But what I'm going to have to do now is put leaded on here. It's just not an ideal sort of situation, you know? That's enough there, to be fair. See that little bit of solder that we've got on the ground plane there? So what I'm going to do is come back in with another bit of flux. And just, this will sort itself out. Okay. Any components fall off now, they were just not fit for purpose. Cool. Here we go. I'll be honest, guys. I'm not comfortable using the same P13 USB because I don't know. Judging by the standards of what we're working with now, I don't want to use the same P13 USB. So I'm just warming up the board now. I've got my solder on now. Not the low mount that was on here previously. And I'm simply just going to sit this chip down. Just like that. And you might be thinking, Jay, that's not in line. And then we're going to come in with a tiny bit of flux just here. And I'm simply going to apply some heat. And we should see this sit nicely in place. Probably going to give this a squeeze as well. Actually, let me check it first, see if it needs a squeeze. There's actually, can you see there's dots on the chip? These are on the side of the chip. Um, so those connections run at the bottom as well. So you might be thinking, oh, but Joey, they're not connected. They are. It's just, it's rare to have both of them connected. Oh, but that, can you see it's not, can you see here? It's not sat down properly. So I've just gone for an angle now and it's shown me the chip is not sat properly. So I'm going to have to squeeze. Two drops of flux, tweezers on. Right, let me just check now. That looks better. That looks so much better. Look, can you see now it's flat to the board? Is it as flat as I'd want it? Let me see. I can't push it any more flat. And it's because I think it's because the board is of how bent the board is. That's definitely going to be a reason as to why this, this chip just wouldn't sit flat, eh? Definitely. I think it's I th I think it's flat though. I do think it's flat. If you look at that left corner, it's on the board, and so is the right one. I do think it's flat. Beauty of this microscope, by the way, the 3D view. Look at that. Yeah, that's flat. The switch is very bent. Yeah. I bet that switch has a BLOD in the repair shop. Didn't know what that means and replaces the USB and P13. Well, uh, as much as I'd love to agree with you, they got back to the customer and it's and it worked. It got back to the customer and it worked. The customer confirmed it worked and then all of a sudden it stopped working. I have no idea how this Nintendo Switch worked in the state that it was in. I'm just going to check the short on P13 USB is gone, which is here. Yeah, it is. So look. We no longer have a short on P13 USB. And just to run over M92 again. That's all good. A, do we get a display? B, does it turn on? There's two big questions there, right? Three, two, one. Power on? Nothing. Can't say I'm surprised, to be honest. Let me check and make sure I've got voltage in this battery and that it's not flat. 3.6. Uh, should be enough. Now, the short's gone and it was showing some sort of charge before. So let me actually plug in the ammeter and see. And the port needs replacing anyway. Oh, no. 
I'm going to tell you now, firsthand from experience, that 500 milliamp draw is really bad. That 500 milliamp draw is super, super bad. And the reason being is because I've had an issue with this before and it's APU related. When it goes straight to 500, it's APU. This one's a goner. Could be the APU there from cracks in the board. Yeah, 100%. I'll push on APU. Right, pushing down on APU. Ready? It's on. Device is on. See that? APU. Wham, bam. Okay. Can I tell you where I am? I don't want to... If I reflow it, I feel like it's going to get damaged further on down the line. And I feel like that would only be temporary. If I reball it, I'm also under the impression that the board is bent. So how much of a fix is that actually going to be? The issue with bending it back, more damage and internal traces. If you bend it and you bend it back, it's just more... It's just like... Think of it like the trace like snapping. It's so much more common that that would happen if you were to try and bend it back. Bending it back is not an option. Honestly, the only kind of option that I see is is reballing. Yeah, it can't get any worse. Thing we have to remember as well is that yes, I just got the switch to turn on, but I didn't test all the functionalities, right? So we could have a plethora of things that are just still not working because of the fact the APU might have other balls elsewhere, data lines and power rails that are just causing things to not work that we don't know about. It's going to be really interesting as well to see how many pads are potentially pulled. It's worth noting here for anyone who's interested, my heat map was set to 120 degrees Celsius and my hot air station from the top was around about 350. Very clean pool, by the way. Very clean. I'm very happy with my temperatures. Very happy with my temperatures. Let's see if any pads have come off. Wow, look at all of that um, thermal paste. There's a lot of thermal paste on here. I'm not going to put it to 120. I'm going to put it to like 80 just to help me. Right now, I'm adding flux, and I'm going to add some leaded. The reason I'm adding leaded solder is so that it brings down the melting temperature of these little balls. And it should make my life easier, technically. When it comes to removing. Good practice for my... <laughs> When I do cores, <laughs> that missing pad top left, see that? Could have been a weak one. What do I mean by no connect? A pad that doesn't connect to anywhere on the board. Let's just uh, check around here and make sure that we're all good elsewhere. Usually, in my experience anyway, uh, where we see stuff go wrong is down here. And these all look okay. I genuinely believe it's just because the board is a little bit bent. It's ground. Two ohms. Board is hot as well, by the way. Okay, cool. So I can write that off. Coming in with some flux now. We try pace first. 350. I'm going to go with 80%. See the different size balls? Can't have that. So I have to go again. I have to use balls on this, I think. This is the issue with it as well. Use so much solder and wick. Now begin the utter bread and butter pain that proceeds with reballing. I obviously failed this with the paste, hence why I'm now moving on to the balls. The balls also becomes really finicky. And even after you've put the stencil on and you've sorted your balls, there is no doubt going to be one or two, or at least 30 in my case, that don't play fair. And you have to start rearranging them and sorting them out as well. This just takes up, again, more time. However, we eventually got there in the end. <laughs> Pin one is up here, I believe. If I take this board for reference, because that seemed to fit nicely. That looks good, hey? Perfect. That's in place. All right, we're going to go... Yeah, I'm going to go three... I'm actually going to put it down a little bit to 360 from the top. We've got 120 from the bottom, so the 360 should be enough. We've got 60% airflow, and I will aim to give this a little bit of a nudge. I still need to replace the port on this, by the way. <laughs> if this works, I need to replace the port. Let's go. That's it. For me, one of the biggest things is that I used to inundate the chip with flux, man. I used to use so much flux and PLD will be really happy to hear this because I feel like he shares the same values in the simil in, and similarities in terms of how much flux to actually be used. You don't need to use that much flux. I feel like, especially in those scenarios, like A, it's a mess to clean up. B, I think it actually adds more detriment. If you add more flux, it can actually cause the chip to move and bobble around a bunch. Three, two, one. Let's go, man! Come on now! 
Now I need to change the charging port. Well, I'm super happy. I'm super happy that we managed to get the uh, the APU to do its thing. Do we have any rip traces? Right, that's all molten now. Here we go. We're going for the removal. Any rip pads? Still not coming up properly right there. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. No rip pads. I do not believe it. It's that top right one. I need that to go. Yeah, this board is it's just... I said it a thousand times. I'll say it one more. It's very bent. So it's going to be very, very difficult to get all these pins on. I'm going to try my best. Quick clean. They look good. They look good. They look good. They look good. Does that mean that the ones underneath are 100% good? Absolutely not. Just because these ones look okay. They do look good though. 15 volts. 120. Just give me a display. Cool. Okay. So this battery is obviously 120 milliamps. Uh, it's pretty flat. So I just need to wait now. But that's good. I mean, it charges one way. It's most certainly going to be able to charge the other way now as well. But I will confirm that in a second. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Nintendo Switch. Turn on, please. Lovely, Charlie. If it does dock, I will be shocked just because of the state of everything. Here we go. Three, two, one. I plugged it in. No, I'm not shocked. I'm not shocked in the slightest that it doesn't dock. So we still have, after all of that, we still have the original issue, which is that it doesn't dock in a docking station. That's why they originally took this into a repair shop because it didn't dock. I kind of feel like I have to investigate it. Oh, it's turned off. Why is it turned off? No. I don't believe it. It's, it's got, it's, it has to be internal. It has to be internal traces. That's the APU. That's the APU. Straight to 500. That's the APU. <sighs> and just like that, the rug is pulled. What a roller coaster this has been, man. Oh, I'm so gutted. I, the fact that I've replaced the charging port as well <laughs> because of what we had. Oh, man. And I know that the reboot for the APU worked because it turned on without the pressure. I think it's internal layer damage with how bent it is, man. It's going to work now. Watch. Oh, wait. Yeah, exactly the same. No. What? And now it's not turning on again. I oh, know it is with the same battery, but it's still having like funny five minutes. And I don't know what. I don't know what to blame here is. I don't know why it's working and then all of a sudden not working, etc., etc. I think it's how bent it is, guys. It has to be. The board itself, maybe after I put the screws in, it's so temperamental. And I think it is literally a case of you can't, you're not going to be able to trust this Nintendo Switch. Like you can't trust this Nintendo Switch. I could do a bunch more work to this, but if there's internal board layer damage, which I think it's the only explanation I have as to why it's just messing around as much as it is. I don't think that I don't think it's worth spending any more time on it, which is a shame because I really thought I got it working after I rebuilt that APU. And um, this is what happens with repairs: sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. I maybe should have called it called it when I saw how bent the board was, but I really, really wanted to fix it for this person. But it is what it is. I mean, we gave it a really, really, really good go. And just like that, unfortunately, this one does come to an end. I've emailed the customer and said, you know, unfortunately, this is what's happened. This is the situation because I don't think they were there for the stream. And being honest, if it was mentioned to me in the email how bent the Nintendo Switch was, I probably wouldn't have taken the repair on because I know that can completely destroy boards. I don't understand how this was working when it came back from the shop. That's one of the things that I didn't really talk about in the video, I don't think. Because of how bad the P13 chip was shorted, I would go ahead and assume that it wouldn't turn on. But if the device had battery when it came back from the shop as P13 USB is not required, maybe it was working and turning on, but again, didn't work in a docking station. Then I think potentially what happened is somebody might have sat on it or bent the switch further and that is the reason for the no power. Anyway, this one was a bit of a roller coaster. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. And as always, I shall see you in the next one. Peace.